During season one, it wasn't as wild. And then by season five, I was like, what is happening? How long do you have to prep and plan? Eight days. And eight days? I love watching the crossovers. That's like my favorite. Oh. Legends is fun. It's a fun one to watch. There was that huge zombie episode where there was like hundreds of zombies. He oh. was so great to put prosthetics on. They'll have like cupboards and cupboards and cupboards of makeup. <laughs> We're flying somebody to Seattle to pick up this freaking concealer. <laughs> that is 99% not what we want. One thing I loved about that show is that they didn't take themselves way too seriously. Yeah, that was one of my favorites. The least stressed I've been in my life. <laughs> you get this script and you're reading it and you're like, oh. And then you have a meeting and then you're like, oh, who is where and why and how are we doing all of this? Even in the winter, you do that in a tent? Great. Hi. Hey, Haley. <laughs> it's really nice to meet you. Thanks so much for doing this. Yeah, no problem. I'm excited. <laughs> Great. So can you start by telling everyone who doesn't know what <laughs> you did on Legends? Okay. Um, for season one, I was the additional first assistant makeup artist. So there's your department head that runs the whole department, her key assist, who's like her right hand that helps organize everything. And then the additional first that comes in and helps process cast and kind of relieves the key of anything that they need to do. And then there's your additional additional, which was what I was. Um, okay. So I would come in on really heavy cast days and help process cast and watch them on set and do the makeups that were needed. Um, I also did prosthetics for season one. Dominic has the burns all up his arms and on his chest oh, and stuff yeah. and with that. And I also was working in the effects shop before I got asked to be on the show, building the Hawk helmets for Sierra and oh, Hawk. Yeah. Cool. And then for season two to season five, I was working at a prosthetic shop called Lindell Schmink and Effects, where we made all the prosthetics and the special effects and the characters and stuff for the show. Yeah. So you've been there for a while. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when did, yeah. When I did actually... you first like hear about Legends? Like what was the, like, did well, you get it through other jobs or how did that happen? Um, when I was working at WCT for Bill Terrazakis, when he got the Hawk helmets and we started making those and then the burns and stuff. Um, it originally was called, the pilot was called the Adam pilot and it was more supposed to be about Adam, but oh. then everything kind of changed and then they, it became the Legends of Tomorrow. Oh, yes. It was <laughs> a process and then, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Even after it started, I feel like it was a gradual process of... Yeah, getting into like what it like eventually what everybody <laughs> is yeah <laughs> this was one of the questions i asked a bunch of like other people yeah. just many questions as well and lisa was asking why makeup were you into like beauty and fashion or did you always want to work in show business and the arts i actually wanted to be a genetic biologist and do disease study oh hello oh. okay <laughs> <laughs> My That's life cool. took a wacky turn. <laughs> um, I needed to upgrade some credits and I was going to college and my the timing of my upgrading and when the program that I wanted to get into started was off. So I had about a, a eight month window where I either could stay doing whatever. And in the college I was at, or I, I was like, I'm going to do something fun while I'm like waiting for this stuff because I've been working so hard to do this and I just decided to go to makeup school <laughs> and so I was like the fun course it'll be great I'll yeah. move out of my hometown for a minute and experience something else and then I took the course I fell in love with the prosthetics portion of it and I met my former employer and I got a job right away and it just that's oh, just that's where my life went yeah that's so cool. And you never looked back? Or are you still kind of thinking that? No, I never, I never did. No, I actually um, just started my own business in June. Oh, oh um, congratulations. So, That's amazing. Thank you. <laughs> so I've been running and getting that off the ground. And we're currently working on like Fla the last season of Flash. Um, oh, great. Riverdale, the last season of Riverdale, Resident Alien. So we have like a few like good shows right now that we're working on, which is fun. Amazing. That's so cool. <laughs> what kind of that? This was one of I think it was Rodan's question. Like, what kind of makeup did you do on Legends? Well, this is kind of like you did because she was asking, <laughs> is it like 
beauty or monsters or whatever and if you did both oh. which one did you enjoy better um i always will always love the monsters more they're yes. more fun <laughs> they're more creative even getting to do like the the burn scars and stuff on dominic was nice because it's something different you know than yeah. the regular old <laughs> but yeah. regular makeup can be fun too like i still do both like i'll dabble back and forth if I have the time and a department head's like, I would love for you to come out. I'd be like, okay, I will. Fine. <laughs> so did you like when you started, you started in season one, were you already like, oh, I want to do like prosthetic stuff, but I'll do this for now. Or were you like, did you, um, were you introduced to it during Legends or how did that happen? No. So I've been doing prosthetics for 15 years. Oh, well, there we go. I've been doing it for a long time. <laughs> My career went kind of backwards than most people. I started in prosthetics and then went into beauty makeup and then came back to prosthetics. Oh. Um, basically my desire when um, I got asked to do the first season was to get all my union days so that I could become a union member. So I could do more prosthetics on set. Cool. Um, and that was the understanding with the department head at the time as well. I'll do this show with you. I'll get my days and I'll get my membership. And then once the show is done, I'm going to go back to doing the prosthetics and the effects. But then I ended up on Arrow for like three seasons doing straight makeup. And <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Things happened. Yeah. <laughs> That's so great. When you work on a show, do you watch the show when it airs? Or are you like super involved in the show? Or is it just like, I'm just doing prosthetics and makeup on these people and then I go home and that's it? Sometimes I do. It depends on the show. Like if I'm interested yeah. in the show, <laughs> I watch it. Um, or if I want to see what we did and how it like looks, I'll I'll watch it. Um, there's some shows that I'm just like, I could not watch this if somebody <laughs> paid me because it's not my type of show. Right. Um, Fair. But Legends is fun. It's a fun one to watch. Actually, like all of the Arrowverse stuff, I yeah. do enjoy watching. I love watching the crossovers. That's like my favorite oh. part of all the seasons. <laughs> <It's> like, yes. <laughs> And, and working in them, like when you're working on the crossovers, you're just like, who is where and why and how are we doing all of this? And it's like a month of just, yes, <laughs> like it's, it's insane. Crossovers are insane. <laughs> yeah, because I've talked to a bunch of people who've been like involved in the show and I feel like everyone is like crossovers are the worst. <laughs> so I'm glad you enjoyed them. <laughs> I love the challenge. I love the challenge of crossovers. Yeah. I used to follow Steven with Arrow when he was going to other sets and like do him consistently. And most of the leads would have either the department head or their key come with them to the other shows just to keep them consistent. Oh. But everybody else was getting done by the other makeup artists that were on the other shows. On that show. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, it was a lot to navigate and I really like scheduling and like figuring th figuring things out and like puzzles and stuff like that so I really really enjoyed it um but, a lot of people yeah. <laughs> <laughs> crossover would be nice then <laughs> it feels like one big puzzle yeah um, did you work you... on all of them do you remember like which crossovers you did yeah I did all of them. did you have a favorite crossover the one with the anti-monitor because I got to do La Monica Garrett's makeup for that, the like white kind of ghosty makeup. And he oh, was geez. so great to put prosthetics on. Like, oh, great. If there was ever another show that was like, we need a guy covered in prosthetics, I'd be like, La Monica, <laughs> like that guy. Because he really enjoyed it, like as a character transformation. And he sat so well, like, he, like we did a time lapse of him and he's like sitting there like, it's perfectly fine like running around him and he's just like every once in a while he might like do like one of these <laughs> <laughs> like i'm still alive <laughs> yeah and it was at like three three hour three and a half hour makeup or something like that oh, and God. we would like get up and have like a break in the middle to like stretch and stuff and have a snack and then go back to it but yeah he was a he was so great to work on and to work with he was a really really wonderful amazing yeah. <laughs> oh now I want to go back and watch that that's so cool <laughs> how long does it usually take I'm sure there's like <laughs> like a hundred different answers to this question yeah but how long like do you get like you have like 30 minutes go or do you get to say how long it will take you we usually have several meetings before 
they even go to camera about what we're making and what we're doing and how long it's going to take and timing and scheduling and stuff like that, just so we can figure out how to fit it all into the day schedule. Usually it meant we were like in at like three or four in the morning before everybody else to get LaMonica done so that he could work all day on set. And then we would take it off at the end of the night. Yeah. Uh, So a lot of the times, like I do get to give time estimates and be like, it is going to take this long and we are going to need this amount of time to get it done. Hmm. That's cool. What about with like, if we talk of season one of Legends or your other jobs where you've done like normal makeup, do <laughs> does everyone have their own makeup artist? Do you work on everyone or what? It kind of depends how the day crumbles. Like there's on Arrow, I did Emily and David consistently. They were my two casts that I would always take care of. And oh. then whoever trickled in throughout the rest of the day, I would, it'd be me or one of our other firsts or the department head. There's usually a department head and two to three additional makeup artists. And oh. we eat would have at least two people that were our people. And then everybody else would kind of float between us just so that we had everybody cover and for continuity and consistency and stuff of the episodes. Yeah. How was it? I'm trying to think on Legends in season one, how much, well, they were like time traveling and stuff and there's different, did it already then feel like it's a different show every week and you need to do different looks? Oh, yeah. People? It was a different, it was a different show every day. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> how was it that was for fun. you? <laughs> I, I loved it. I loved when we would go back to like old cowboy Western times and oh, stuff wow. like that. You just get to like put a little bit of dirt on them. And... Yes. <laughs> Those were, my, those were super fun episodes. Um, when I came in on Legends, I actually ended up doing, it just depended how the day would go. Sometimes I would do Victor, um, Victor. sometimes I would do Brandon, sometimes I would do one of the girls. Like it just depended on how the day went. Some department heads make it so that everybody in the trailer can do everybody. And some department oh, heads okay. make it so that you have your cast and that's your cast. So it yeah. just depends on the department head you're working for. And timing and everything. Like sometimes you'll have eight cast members in your trailer and you can't have the same person do their makeup that day because it just won't work. <laughs> yeah, fair. Did you, this just came to my mind now, did you work on Jonah Hex ever and he's prosthetic? Because you yeah. at the Western. Yeah. Yeah, his like cheek, cheek thing. thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was um, one of the ones I helped out with. Okay. I think it wasn't the first season he came back later on. I didn't do him the first time he played, but I did him like later. Yeah, he comes back a couple times. Yeah, I can't remember when, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whenever we're in the Wild West, usually. He yeah, whenever we were shooting out it. Yeah, that old Western town <laughs> oh, that floods God. all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Flood. We I was on Sabrina, and we had to evacuate because it was flooding. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> This is great. It's like in the middle of a field in the middle of nowhere. You're like, yeah. okay, get me a gator. A <laughs> yeah. Do you have a favorite legend? Maybe that's yes. a hard question. Yes. But oh. he's he's more of a behind the scenes legend. Um, it would have to be Katie's dog, Beasley. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, I, I'm sure they would have been on set. No, he was always in the makeup trailer. Oh, uh, oh, he was always hanging out there? Yeah, because the hair department had also had a dog. So they would um, go walk and like take care of them to get stuff. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, that's a good answer. I was not expecting that. That's great. (laughs) He was my favorite, though. Anytime he was in the trailer was a great day. (laughs) Yeah. Then when we go like to the later seasons, can you remember what was the hardest prosthetic or stuff to work on that you were like I don't know this is gonna work or is it always like yeah easy god no it's never oh that's easy um I think it's the episode called the hay hay world yeah where there was all those creative like all the magical creatures in it there's a lot yeah that was I had like 30 people out that day and it was like a huge prosthetics crowd to like process and get everybody done I had like trailers and tents and people everywhere and just making sure everybody was getting them done on time to get to set and like <laughs> yeah that's um oh and the zombie there was that huge zombie episode where there was like hundreds of zombies they were in the pub the irish pub oh yes oh um, yes and there was like 
all those zombies, that was a huge one to also coordinate as well, because I think I had, there was like the deep background that straight makeup was doing and just like kind of painting. And then we had mid ground and then we had foreground and then we had hero and then we had stunts. So we had like tiers of different. Yeah. So I would have the stunt, the stunts would come in first because they were the biggest ones and I'd have to have two people per stunt to process them. And I would have them get finished, have one of the people break away and go back and help with the forefront background while half the crew went to set to watch the stunts. And then they would just churn out more zombies <laughs> like in the morning. It was, it was, it, it, yeah, it was a lot. <laughs> it was a lot. Oh yeah, true. Cause there were so many extras in that episode. There was like a hundred and something like, it was yeah. a lot. I talked with Andrew Cash like last week, I think, who directed that episode. And I was talking yeah. to him about like that there were some zombies that had like looks from like some like yeah. um, <laughs> classic zombie movies or whatever. So were you like working on those? And how do you No, so I gave those oh. I gave those ones to specific artists that I knew that were gonna love them, like the trash zombie. I was like Jordy, you get this one. I know you love this movie. You're going to nail it. Like, right. have fun. <laughs> yeah. Things like that. I was more like there to float and help people that were struggling and like jump in. If I was oh. like, oh, you're like having a bit of an issue with this one. And I would jump in and help people and help process and get people out faster. So, okay, cool. Yeah. I did like one stunt guy with another person and then I just helped everybody else. <laughs> okay. How long before do you get the notice, for example, that we're going to need a hundred and something zombies like this day, you know, like how long do you have to prep and plan eight days. and eight days? <laughs> yeah. Um, right. Sometimes sometimes they'll like be nice and they'll let you know an episode or two prior. But a lot of the times it's like you get this script and you're reading it and you're like, oh, and then you have a meeting and then you're like, oh, <laughs> you're I like, didn't realize I missed this. Yeah. And then you're like, when's this play in the schedule? And they're like the first day. And you're like, great. <laughs> means we have eight days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now and then. Has um, there ever been a time when you're like, we can't do like, we can't make it. There has been times where I've been given a design and I've looked at it and I'm like, within this time frame that we have, we can't make it look like this. We can make it look more like this and get this accomplished within this time, but we can't do that. Like this is three months of work where this is three days of work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> deal, so it, yeah. So there, there has been times where I've been like, we don't have the ability to do it, do that right now. But with bigger, bigger things, they normally let you know an episode or two in advance so that you can get them ready and, and going um yeah which is nice but for like zombies and stuff they're like they're just zombies you're like that's a lot <laughs> just <of> zombies <laughs> <Be easy. laughs> no big deal <laughs> oh god i do remember we had um there was like a week or two weeks where we had to have the cow pay werewolf done the chupacabra and the minotaur and i was like those are three massive creatures <laughs> We had, like the minotaur i think we had six days to get done Gosh. and the chupacabra i think we had like eight and then the cow pay we had more time because he was going to be a kind of a consistent character yeah so it's like <laughs> just three tiny creatures with nothing <laughs> yeah you can do this right yeah you guys as artists is it always accomplished that you at the end are happy with what you're putting out there or do you sometimes have to be like i don't think this is good but we don't have time so go yeah unfortunately there are those times also there's like as the artists we don't get to make some of the calls and like what things end up looking like or how they want them to look so we might not agree with what they like but we still have to make it that way because they're our client and we have to make them happy. It's not really about our feelings. It's more about the production and the network and like the show that matters than what I think. Yeah. <laughs> I can like help guide them, but yeah, that's fair. <laughs> sometimes they don't take my the guidance. Yeah. 
do you have favorite episodes or scenes or stuff that you worked on on Legends that you were like, either the vibe was good when you're working on it or like the end result was great? I loved the puka makeup. Um, oh, yes. She had like the little like furry face. It yeah. was on uh, oh. Devin Dalton. That makeup was one of my absolute favorites. It's still one of my favorite makeups. Um, and then I also liked at the, I think the end of season five, when we turned them all into the Gromulan aliens and they had like oh. the forehead pieces oh. with like wigs and stuff. That was one of my favorites. I got to do um, Matt for that one. And he was a riot the whole time. That's so great. <laughs> oh, I forgot about those ones. Oh, that was <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> yeah, they're like stuck in the TV screen. <laughs> <Yes>. Oh, <laughs> such a weird show this is, but it's so good. Yeah, that was one of my favorites. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, that's great. And that was when I think I think Mark Guggenheim was directing. He directed, yeah. Yeah, one. and he loved them. He was like, these are amazing. And I was like, oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. they were so good. But like and the way they speak and everything. Yeah, Dion did a, such a good job with all the wigs on all of them, too. It was so good. <laughs> that was one of the ones where, like, all the pieces just, like, slid together. And, yeah. Like, it was amazing. Yeah. Great. How, like, how much do you usually work? Someone was asking that. How much do you work together with other departments, like hair? Oh, or all the time. It's everything is a collaboration with another department. We're always working with props. We're always working with special effects. We're always working with makeup and hair. We're always working with costumes because you have to have like a flow and it has to like mesh well. And when you're not communicating properly with those departments, that's when you have things that don't look quite right or don't turn out how they should have turned out or there's hiccups and problems along the way. So yeah, we're usually always in communication with other departments. And my department's a weird department because we're technically like a vendor and we get hired by the production to build the things. Oh, right. Yeah. As everybody else is on set Monday to Friday, they're full time. They just, with us, it's like, oh, we're going to hire you to build this thing for us. Oh, yes. Okay. Like, okay. And then I have to like reach out to everybody and figure everything out and yeah, like we're we're like this weird because we also like cross over and what we can do as well. So we also do special effects. We can also make props. We can also do certain set deck builds, and we can do you know hair and makeup and all of that stuff. So sometimes they don't really know how to like utilize us and place us in the. Yeah. Do you have favorite memories of like those kinds of collaborations where kind of like you just said before, where everything <laughs> just clicks and you're like, yes. Yeah, Puka. Puka was like seamless start to finish. Like oh, so nice. just everything worked out. There was um also the accountant. He was the old guy with like the horns. Oh, in yes. one yeah, he um he just like was the least stressed I've been in my life. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's not nice. this is thing where you're like, wow, this is well. and um the anti-monitor, he was another one that just like seamlessly felt like there's very few times where it's like not going well <laughs> um that's nice <laughs> yeah there's definitely been some where I'm like oh, I would have approached this differently and would have done this differently looking back on it now not a lot on legends I don't think I don't remember like any ones that I was like oh. yeah right <laughs> this is not working <laughs> definitely on other shows where I've been like mm. <laughs> <laughs> right yeah james was asking uh how was it for you witnessing the gradual and then outright wild evolution of legends because you were there since the beginning and if you yeah. ended in season five you saw a lot <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then they went into like these big alien creatures for like the rest of them yeah season six was they gone or whatever yeah. <laughs> they were great they looked amazing Doing season one, it wasn't as wild. And then by season five, I was like, what is happening? Like, where are we going? <laughs> Why is Marie Antoinette's head rolling across the floor? <laughs> Why not then again? <laughs> I know. That was fun. I was like off camera rolling this head. Really? Trying to get to like, land. <laughs> so I was looking at the camera and I'm like... <laughs> with this big wig. <laughs> we're like, what is my job? 
what I am, like what am I doing? Those are days where I'm like, this is wow, <laughs> not where I thought my life would be. Uh, Rolls head again. Yeah. <laughs> again. Ah, oh, the freaking head. Do you remember a time when for the first time, because there is a time for everyone who worked on this show when it was like the first time when, when you're like, this is crazy. What is, what has this show become? Like, do you remember yeah. the first like crazy moment or when did you think like, oh, now this is weird? <laughs> oh, oh, really? From the beginning? Well, no, the first season was pretty straightforward and normal with Hawk Woman and Hawk Man. Honestly, like, I think by season th- three or four, I was like, huh. <laughs> I liked the one thing I loved about that show is that they didn't take themselves way too seriously. That's true. Where, because I was doing Arrow, Flash, Supergirl, and Legends, all for the company that I was working for. So I was running all of those shows. So I'd read like, I would get excited when I was getting to the legend scripts because I'd be oh, like, final cool. humor. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Oh, that's that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> that is fair. Cause it is funny. Cause I feel like legends, the first season was kind of a lot like the other Arrowverse. Yeah. It was more shows. serious than it. Like yeah. they were like, we can't do, we can't take ourselves this. Like, <laughs> no. no. And that's when it got good. Cause it yeah, exactly. its own thing. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, I loved the humor. I liked reading the scripts because, like, also in the um, not just in the dialogue, but in the direction as well, they would put in little jokes and things like that. And so it was like it was just like a nice time reading those scripts. I really liked breaking those ones down. What do you think is the hardest thing about doing VFX stuff, and like, what is the most rewarding? That was Brian's question. The hardest part, for sure, is trying to take the information that's given to you and the direction from the creatives on the show and making a design and turning it into what you're envisioning that they're envisioning. Yes. So your interpretation of what they're telling you is very, very difficult. Some I've given designs and had the response that that is 99% not what we want. Right. <laughs> so. They're like, great. You're like, okay, so completely wrong direction. Let's pull yeah. it back and go in the other directions. Yeah. yeah, it's the interpretation of what you're being told by these people and like what they want. And sometimes you have like, they're going to be like five or six people that are all kind of telling you things and they're all contradicting each other. And you're trying to navigate and decipher what the actual thing that they want is. And sometimes like on other shows, there would be like 50 emails in like an hour going back and forth and I'd be like okay you need to sidebar me out of this talk amongst yourselves and I one of you can go and tell me what you want because like this is too much for me to like decode <laughs> yeah yes and the most rewarding um when you nail it like when you make your design and they look at it and they're like that's it that's exactly what we wanted yeah. first one out the gate you're just like amazing yeah great there's <laughs> There's certain um, creative producers that I know what they want. Like when they're telling, like I can just read them and know exactly like Eric um, Wallace on flash. He'll tell me something and I'll be like, I know exactly what you need. And then I'll do it. And he'll be like, love it. There'll be like minor changes. Like, Oh, I want it like a little more this way or a little more that way, but it won't be like, this is completely wrong. Yeah. We always like kind of have the same um, vision, which is, Nice. It's nice. That's really cool when you find that with people that you work with. Rodan was asking, did you get to experience something new in terms of professional skills during your time on Legends? Stress management. (laughs) Oh, Oh, there was like a lot of really big days where I was like, I'm all right. (laughs) That's a good skill. You just got to put your head down and just like, plow to the finish line because you're just like it's gotta get done um like the yeah hay world was a big one with all of those fantasy creatures and stuff and then the zombie episodes like yeah where you you have to learn to sleep at night and not like let those thoughts of how are we going to get this done how much time do we have if we do it here and blah blah blah. you got to like learn how to separate yourself from that and that was like a big skill that I learned actually across all those Arrowverse shows was when I'm at home, I'm at home. And when I'm at work, I'm at work. And that's when I deal with these things. I 
have learned how to stop letting my life and my work bleed together. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> that's a good skill for anyone to learn. <laughs> really? <laughs> I thought I was good at it before, and then I was like, yeah. not at all. I'm terrible at this. <laughs> yeah. If it's all right, I'll ask a few of the normal makeup yeah. questions, because you have done a lot of that, so I'm sure you have like, <laughs> answers for <laughs> the <your> general knowledge. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, how often do you need to fix or change an actor's makeup during filming? Like, are is someone there on set all the time, like, fixing, and how often? Yeah, so... There's always somebody on set with the actor bag ready at a moment's notice to pick things out of their teeth and wipe boogers off their face. Um, (laughs) They're always there. (laughs) And there's a lot of times like we'll flip from based on location, like, oh, we're in day one and then we're in day seven and they have a totally different look. So you have to transfer them from their day one look to their day seven look and then back again. Um, We normally have like a tent with a mirror and like a little mini station set up to like get all of that done right. as quickly as you can, as close to set as possible. Cause sometimes your trailers are 20 minutes away from yeah. the location you're shooting in. Even in the winter, you do that in a tent. Great. Yeah. They have heaters, some of them sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Are the makeup artists provided with makeup supply or do you bring your own? A little bit of A, a little bit of B. Um, okay. So the department head has their kit that fills the trailer. So they have like every tonal range of foundations and concealers and everything that you could ever possibly need of like a million brands, depending on what like day player casts like when they come in, they'll have like cupboards and cupboards and cupboards of makeup that you can pull from to do this with. But when it comes to your one through 10 cast, um, they each have their own bag with the, their own products that they like oh. that is supplied by production. Oh, production will buy that stuff and their skincare and like all the stuff that they need to like stay beautiful. Um, Fair. And they'll that's nice. They, so they'll have like their own dedicated stuff, and then the department head has their stuff that fills the trailer, and then you have your own personal favorite stuff that you keep in your drawers at your station. Yeah. Um, if you like a certain eyeshadow palette more than other ones, or like yeah. if you like a certain concealer that maybe the department head doesn't have or things like that. So you have like your own stuff as well. Yeah. Um, but you also get paid a kit fee. So every day that you're working, you get paid basically a rental for your if kit you that you have. Your own. Or do you yeah. always bring your own anyways? Maybe. I always bring mine because I never yeah. know. Yeah. Like <laughs> You never know what you're walking into when you're yeah. day calling. <laughs> Even when I'm first assisting, like there's certain stuff that I like to work with more than other people. And like the department head might not like it. So they might not stock it in their own kit. So it's just like one of those things. So right. anytime you're in, you get a kit fee every day that you're working. Um, it's like anywhere from 30 to $50 a day or something like that to like replenish and restock what you're using out of your. Yeah. That's nice. Do yeah. actors often have preferences on like brands and things and you always follow those? Yeah, um, as best we can, because there are some things in Canada that we can't get. Oh, so right. um, and like some things, even if you order them from across the border, they won't let them cross because of some type of ingredient or something. So sometimes it's really hard to get products like a lot of productions will have because we're so close to the border, a mailbox on the U.S. side of the border, and we'll get things shipped to there, and then transport will go pick it oh, up and bring great. it. Oh, um, great. Smuggling yeah. makeup into Canada. Yeah. <laughs> How dare that mascara across that border? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so there's things like that. I think like there was a Chanel concealer we couldn't get here that for um, Katie Cassidy that we had to like... <laughs> We're flying somebody to Seattle to pick up this freaking concealer. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> but yes, they do. Like, um, Brandon is very particular about using organic products and he eats really healthy and stuff like that. And he really cares about what goes in his body and on his body. So that's something to be very cautious and aware of when you're yeah. working with him. And like, some people love 
a lot of concealer and foundation. Some people hate anything on their face. Like it just depends who you're working with and what their preferences are. And you learn as you're working with them more, it becomes more secondhand to know like what they like and what they don't like and how heavy handed or how light handed you need to be and things like that. Do you have a favorite look, even if you didn't work on like normal makeup from (laughs) season one onwards, but do you have favorite looks off characters because you still must watch them and be like oh that looks good that mm. um, I absolutely loved Courtney in her Marie Antoinette makeup oh my gosh yes that was one of my favorite looks and getting to replicate that on the head was awesome like I love doing beauty and prosthetics together um yeah. same with the Gromulans when we did like their we did their foreheads and like did all that stuff. And then we sent them to makeup to get their makeup processed and then to hair to get their wigs on. Right. So it was like full team collaboration of everybody working on everybody. So that was, yeah. those things are fun too. I really like getting to put beauty and prosthetics together. Mm. Oh, that's cool. What do you think would be some things that the audience doesn't realize that takes a lot of time or that takes a lot of effort put into it or, you know. The no makeup makeup looks. Oh, right. (laughs) They take just as long (laughs) as the regular, like the super glammy look. It's just you're trying to make them look flawlessly natural, which is great. (laughs) (laughs) Sometimes I think that's harder than doing just a glam makeup, like a freaking smoky eye, big thing. Like, yeah, depending like how tired they are, what their turnaround was, what they look like when they walk in the trailer in the morning like sometimes it's not good sometimes they're like i've slept for four and a half hours and (laughs) i'm puffy i can see that (laughs) swollen and my eyes are bloodshot and you know and you're like okay let's how do we take all of this (laughs) yes (laughs) bring it back down (laughs) yes Um, which like i commend a lot of straight makeup artists because they can do it do it quickly and make them look amazing like yeah that's such a skill, in my yeah. opinion. <laughs> yeah. When you see them on screen, the point is that you don't think that they have yeah. an honor. They just any, any, like this. <laughs> any like um, subtle character makeup, I really like like when there's like a little scar added that people would be like, oh, that's just like a part of him. But it's like, no, I paint that in every day or things right. like that. Subtle little things like that. I love I love subtle character makeups as well. Yeah. Did you do that a lot on Legends? On Arrow. On Arrow. Okay. All the time. (laughs) Did you have anything to do with, if you didn't, that's fine. (laughs) I'll cut this out. But did you have anything to do with, someone was asking about Nick Zano's pimples in, I don't remember what the episode is, but when he's like a teenager with the whole (laughs) horrible mullet and the braces and everything. (laughs) Um, I can't remember if we made the braces or not. We might have, or they might have been a prop thing. I've made a lot of braces in my career um but the pimples actually were straight makeup and they just took this specific glue that we have that you can build up to like make the little pimples and then just painted them in oh okay (laughs) yeah and then dion did dion did the wig i believe okay oh it was it was wonderful (laughs) but horrible the whole look was just (laughs) I'm sure he loved it. (laughs) (laughs) That's so funny. Do you can you remember moments when you watched the show or when you were working when you laughed or cried? The Um, (laughs) well, the thing is, is like when I'm on set and we're working, we don't get context, so we don't know what they're saying. Oh, right. It's like watching people on a monitor moving around, mouthing things, and you're like, no. And then you hear like pro- the video village with the producers laughing and you're like, this must have been funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. I don't think about that. That of course, like if you see a monitor, there's no sound. Yeah. Yeah. You have to have like the little rate. They only and they only have like comtex for the director and script supervisor and then the producers in the in the video village tent. So Right, right. I never know what they're actually saying. Yeah. <laughs> I usually laugh when I'm reading the script. <laughs> yes. Do you remember when you laughed the most reading a script? All of the scripts had like their funny moments and then their like serious moments. So yeah, I do know that I did. I do like laugh out loud when I, when I was reading those ones. 
Yeah, they were very similar. Like the writing style in those scripts was very similar to how Supernatural would write their scripts. So they would like make fun of, not make fun of, but like tease the actors in the direction line of like what they were doing and things like that. So it's like those little inside jokes are fun too. Oh, that's great. Well, I always ask this from anyone who I've talked to from <laughs> Legends. Do you have like favorite moments behind the scenes or stuff that makes you proud to be a part of this show and working on this show that you look back on and you're like, oh, that was a great time. <laughs> um, <laughs> Dominic trying on all the different wigs. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, no. Wait. <laughs> for... <laughs> For when he had just for fun like, Fabio <laughs> hair for that. I mean that was funny too, but like just for fun. Like sometimes he oh just like, any wigs. Yeah, the trailer would be full of people, and he'd just be like waiting to get processed, and he'd pluck a wig, and put it on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, that was good. <laughs> yeah. He was he's a very funny person actually. Mm. He looks very serious and mean, but he's very funny and very kind. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh Dom. Oh. Yeah. Hated getting his burns on. He would like lay back in the chair and pass out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, he's like, me. if you have to, do it. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I'm not gonna be awake for it though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the burns looked great. We didn't it see did. them much, but when we did. Very yeah, cool. only when they're scripted did we ever see them. Yeah. Because it takes too long for like a daily process. It's too long. Yeah. Well, this was great. Thank Thanks you. so much for doing this. Um, yeah, no. It was really nice to meet you and talk about your job. It's so interesting because I'm like, I feel like I know nothing about this. <laughs> so it's very cool to hear about like more practical stuff and stuff like that. So Thank you so much for your time. And You're very welcome. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Kaylee. You. <laughs> Bye. Bye.